Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 525, contiguous array. Given a binary array nums, return the maximum length of a contiguous subarray with an equal number of zeros and ones. So, for example, if we're given this nums here, zero and one, what are the two subarrays that are contiguous and have an equal number of zeros and ones? Well, it's going to be zero, one and one, zero, right? And both of these actually have a length of two, which is our solution here. So how might we solve this problem? Well, we could do it in a naive manner. And basically that is going to be uh, building all the possible contiguous subarrays, right? So we could have zero, we could have zero, one, we could have zero, one, zero, we could have one, we could have zero, one, zero, and then zero, right? And the only ones that have an equal amount are these two, which is the ones that we saw earlier. They both have a length of two, and that's our solution. But doing this is not going to pass your interview because this is a very inefficient solution. You basically have to build all possible combinations, and that's going to be a ridiculously expensive time complexity, and your interviewer is basically just going to laugh at you. So how can we solve this problem in the most efficient manner and actually pass the interview? So what we want to realize is we are interested in the count of the zeros and ones in a subarray. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have a count variable, which represents basically the balance between the ones and the zeros. And obviously in the beginning, we haven't counted any, so it's going to be at zero. And anytime we see a one, what we're going to do is we're going to increment the count by one. And if we see a zero, we're going to decrement the count by one. So let's look at a different example. We have zero, one, zero, 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 one, 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 right? So let's look at what our count would look like if we were to do it this way. So obviously we start at zero. So we see the ones, we're gonna increment our count by one. So the count is now plus one. We see a zero, so now we subtract one from it. So the count is now zero. We see another zero, so now it's minus one. We see another zero, it's minus two. We see another zero, it's minus three now. We see a one, so we're gonna add one. So now it becomes minus two. Then we see another one, it becomes minus one. And now we add one to it because we have another one and we have zero. So the points where we had zero, it's going to be here and it's going to be here, right? So those uh, are potential solutions. So basically, I mean, the, the optimal solution is the entire thing because it's perfectly balanced. But, you know, what we can look for is points where our count is zero. And that is for sure going to be a place where they're balanced. But what about this subarray here? This one actually has a balance in it. But, you know, it didn't show up because we were only looking for zeros. Well, let's think about this. If we have some count minus three because of some stuff in the array and then some more stuff happens and then at some point we're at minus three, whatever happened between these two points, we don't know, right? It's these squiggles. It can be any random numbers, but all we know is that we started at minus three and we ended at minus three. So that means that all the ones got canceled out by zeros, which means that the numbers between these two points actually are balanced, right? So if we look at this between the minus two and the two, these two values, including the, the, the end point here, is actually a balanced array. So we not only want to look for points where the count is actually zero in these cases, because we know for sure it's going to be zero, but we actually want to look at points where the count is actually something that we've seen before. So here we've seen minus two before, and here we've also seen minus two before. So that means that everything starting from the next one after this minus two up until this minus two point is actually going to be a balanced array. And we can see the same thing here with the minus one and the minus one, right? So everything from the right of this first minus one and then up until the second one is going to be balanced, right? We see that there's one, two zeros and then two ones. So this part is also balanced. So we can't just look for points where it's zero. We also need to look for points where we've seen that count before and then basically take the difference between the end index and the start index and that will give us our um, our length there. And this calculation actually won't be uh, including the endpoint here. So that way we don't accidentally like count the wrong value, right? So what do we want to do? We want to maintain a dictionary, which is going to map the count and the last time we saw it, right? The index that we saw that count at. Basically, if we've seen the count before, then we want to update our answer with whatever the maximum of the current answer is and the difference between the last time we saw that point and our current point, right? So if we kind of think about this, 
um, you know, we're going to do whatever our current index is minus the last time we saw it. So we're going to, if this is our dictionary, we'll call it D. We're going to say our current index I minus D of whatever the last time we saw that count was. And that will actually give us, you know, this is the case where we see like a minus two twice, right? So we want to actually take that difference because we know between those two points is actually a zero. So that's essentially what I want to do. And if the count isn't in there, all we need to do is just put it into the dictionary and continue. So that's how we solve this problem. Let's go to the code editor, write this up. It's like 15 lines of code, super simple. We are in the code editor, let's write this up. Remember that we need a dictionary to basically keep track of our counts, right? So we're gonna say scene at equals to a empty dictionary. And we actually need to initialize our dictionary with a value here. And we're gonna say scene at of zero equals to minus one, because obviously our count starts at you know, zero. And we can't say that the count is zero at the zeroth index because obviously at the zeroth index, there could be a one or a zero, in which case it would be either minus one or positive one. So we can't say that it's one, uh, zero, we actually have to set it equal to minus one. And that way that our, our math's gonna work out if we need to do the subtraction. It, so say the first two values are actually uh, balanced and that's our answer, <clears throat> right? When we see the zero, the count will be minus one. Then we see this one, the count will become zero. And remember that we take our current index, which is, you know, this is gonna be index one, and we wanna subtract it with the last time we've seen zero. If we initialized it to zero, it would be the index one minus zero, and that would be our length. But obviously that's not right because this is a length of two. So in that case, we need the minus one, right? So one minus negative one is gonna be two, and that's why we do it to basically handle the case where the uh, solution happens starting from the front. So now that we have that, we basically need a variable to keep track of our answer. So we'll just say ands and it's going to be zero because we haven't found our maximum length yet. And remember, we need that count variable to basically store our current count, <coughs> which is going to be zero. So what we're gonna say is for index num in enumerate nums, we're gonna go from left to right and we're gonna say count, it's gonna get a one added to it if num. So basically if num is a one and not a zero, Otherwise, we just wanna add a minus one to it. Now what we wanna do is actually check whether or not we've seen this count before. Because if we've seen this count before, then we know that we have two points where in between them, the, uh, the basically the balance between the ones and the zeros is equal, and that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna say if count in uh, scene at, what we wanna do is we wanna say the maximum length, oops, sorry. Uh, we're calling it answer here, ands is basically gonna be the maximum of whatever our current answer is, and our current index minus the last time we saw this. So seen at of that count. And that's gonna be how we update our answer. Otherwise, if we haven't seen this count before, we just wanna put it into the dictionary, seen at and count equals to the current index. And notice that we're not updating the count in the case that we have seen it before, because we want that original count to be as far left as possible. So that way that when we go to the right, we wanna get as big of a window as we can. If we kept moving it up, then we would get local minimums, but we wouldn't actually get the right answer. Or sorry, local maximums, but we wouldn't get that, the actual global maximum. So all we need to do now is just return our answer and we're good to go. I just wanna run this, make sure I haven't made any syntax errors. Okay, cool. We are good to go, let's submit this and it works, brilliant. So what is the time and space complexity for our algorithm? Well, for the time, as you can see, all we're doing is we're going from left to right over our nums, right? We're processing each number once and what we're doing for each number, we're incrementing this count variable and we're looking something up in a dictionary. So the total time complexity here is gonna be big O of n, right? We do these n, uh, we process the n numbers and nums and then we do big O of one operations at each time. So total time complexity is gonna be big O of n, where n is the number of nums in this uh, nums list that we're given. What about the space complexity here? Well, we're storing the counts in our, uh, you know, scene at dictionary. In the worst case, our nums is actually going to be all zeros or all ones, right? So it's gonna be like one, 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 one. So that means that our count variable Right, it starts at zero, but then we see the one, so it becomes one, two, three, four, five, uh, da, da 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 da. And in the case where it's all ones, you know, we're never gonna have duplicates. Each each count is gonna be unique, and it's gonna be one count for basically each one of these numbers here. So in that case, because of that, 
the space complexity is also going to be big O of n for that worst case where we actually need to store uh, one count for basically however long nums is. So that's why the space complexity is big O of n. So this is the most optimal way to solve this problem. You're not going to get a better solution than this. And this is probably what your interviewer is looking for. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, with the YouTube algorithm. Sorry, I can't speak today. And if you want to see more content like this while you're preparing for your on-site interviews, please subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos already uploaded and I plan to make a whole lot more. So subscribe so you don't miss those. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.